Namaskar and welcome to this exciting episode of Satology Debunking Mythology in this special session today. You all know as usual, I'm going to repeat again, Satology means science of truth, the study of truth. Opposite that of that is mythology, which means science or study of fake lie or imagination. The native history has been very incorrectly represented all over the world from the perspective of European writers or European travelers. I'll just give an example. There is one particular writer from the Europe, and not one, there are many of them, never visited India. Never. Never studied the archaeological sites in India, but wrote a whole story about India for the British government officials. And it is like this, many stories are there for South America, for Indonesia, for other places of the world. And, and the the audacities of such people is to call all such histories as native histories. Like if you travel to Mexico even today, Mexico is known for their ancient pyramids, ancient structures, not for what Spanish built over there. And if you go to Brazil, Brazilians are known for their ancient native structures even till date, even though they've tried their best to eliminate every single one of them. India is the only country left which has those treasures kept, maintained in India, even today, even though not in the best state, that's what we're going to find out. So without delay, let us welcome very famous archaeologist and, and he has come out with a new book and also a Padma Shri awardee by the government of India. So let us welcome Dr. K.K. Muhammad. Thank Namaskar. you so much, sir, for this introduction also. And a very, 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 very good introduction. And thank you all. Thank you. So, so what a wonderful book you have come up with. And it's an autobiography, which is a something more interesting for people to read. And people can check it out on Amazon. It is available. And you can see the book. I can show you the book title. And Indian I Am. Very beautiful book title. And it's going to be on the website as well so you can check click on the link if you can see any of you can see that it's live in a in a live show i cannot share right now but this is the book it is and where he's with the president of india ram Kovin now it's changed now is drop the murmur is a different president so before i start off on the book very interesting read actually i went through the book was 35 pages 40 pages but i went through the index also you had Actually, yeah. so what motivated you to write an autobiography because when somebody wants to write an autobiography there is a purpose behind it there's a meaning to it yeah. because they want to emphasize something about through a whole life's achievement something yeah. to the world yeah yeah uh, see the, in my case you know it was accidental because you know i didn't want to write in uh, this one autobiography because i'm not such a famous man but what happened is in uh, archaeologists as a whole group, whether it is Professor Bibila, Professor Sangalia, the great eminent archaeologists, they are all introverts. They are not extroverts like historians. So they don't come out with their own stories also. So archaeology is a mystical science because you know there is a lot of mystery attached with it. People are fascinated by the subject also. Dr. Mohammed, can yeah. you make your camera a little down, please? I'm achha, 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 okay, 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 okay. Because you're bending down and speaking. So achha, 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 yeah. look into the camera and speak. Okay, okay, okay. Please continue. So, uh, as I said, you know, all the famous archaeologists, like Professor B.B. Lal, I'm talking about India, Professor B.B. Lal, Professor Sangalia and many other archaeologists of Archaeological Survey of India, they are all introverts. Because, you know, in our DNA itself, because you know, we don't come out, we don't expose ourselves, we don't say that what we have achieved and what we are going to achieve. But if you look at the historians, it is the other. They, even, I mean, they come out very openly. They are all extroverts also. So this is the history of the uh, autobiography of an Indian archaeologist. 
the only other archaeologist who has written about his uh, autobiography is professor b bilal and that too only only about a very limited part of it so i was i mean uh, i was not having any any this one i mean uh, intention also of writing this autobiography but some of the people i mean who were associated with me they were very much interested they were very fascinated by this one by the i mean the discoveries which i had made that was the discovery of ibadat khana in fatehpur sikri and some of my encounters also encounters with the decoids of chambal valley and similarly with the nexalites of uh, chatisgarh so when i narrated all these things to them they got interested and they told me that i should write my own autobiography and there was one more very powerful reason because you know that was the ayodhya excavation issue because the archaeologists said there are temple remains below the mosque below the babri mosque but a set of historians because you know they were as i told you because you know they are very extroverts they have a lot of press connections also they came out and they went on a publishing spree saying you know no there was no temple professor bb lal had excavated there and he did not get any temple remains and these people were simply historians they had not come to the site of archaeology they had not seen the ayodhya site also but simply they made a statement like that so i had to defend professor bb lal because you know, i was the only muslim who had participated in that excavation under professor bb lal and i had seen that temple remains also not only the temple remains and many other antiquities associated with hinduism and temples so i had to come out in the press also so that got a number of people who were supporting me and for the first time we came to know even archaeologists has also has got a very good audience it is not only the historians so these were the three factors which made me to write this autobiography otherwise you know i mean as i told you archaeologists are always reticent they don't speak out they are introvert they don't come out to the press also but me just wanted to give a, a different kind of narration and secondly this is the a different age also because you know that was a, a different age and this is a different age this is the age of you know information highway information explosion so in such an age you know if you don't speak you know your enemies will write your own story they will write your own history and you will have to read that one so in order it is in order to balance that historical wrongs that i have done i have written this book I wish somebody from the British Empire writes the autobiography of British colonialism on India in a real perspective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually that's true. Yeah, yeah. So, coming back to the founding of ASI, Alex Cunningham. Now, many questions are being raised about his intentions. Also, yeah, that uh, ASI was purposely, uh, and I'm going a little off the topic of your book, but I just yeah, yeah, to, yeah, oh, yeah. before I come to the your book, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the questions are being asked. whether he actually founded mohanjodaro harappa or he was trying he, after he found it because the, those ruins were there for a long time people did not yes, care yes. about it yeah, yeah 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 and the the entire british there is a joke about the british empire is that they actually wanted to get the pyramids from egypt in uk but they could not move brick by brick because the stones were too big yeah <laughs> so so the real intentions of the british empire everybody knows and this is the african story because more <laughs> the african union is now rising up against all the colonization that was done on them in the name of faith That's whether right. it's an islamic invasion from the north or yeah. christian invasion as a colonization yeah yeah so now they're asking these questions so That's so right. do you have any view on alex cunningham because he's a respected person in the yes. society yes. even today yes 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 yes, 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 yes. he is a very 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 well respected person and there is now a group of historians and archaeologists who speaks against the, him also and many other british archaeologists uh, i don't support those people because you know it was of course charles mason charles mason was the first man who had located harappa 
without realizing the importance of what it was. He simply saw some of the mounds there. That was the, the name of the prison was Charles Madison. It was in, in 1843, he had seen it. And then the site was visited by Alexander Cunningham also. He also could not realize the real importance of the site. He saw some of the mounds, so they just thought it might be associated with Alexander and Alexander's invasion. Some of the cities Alexander had conquered, so they, they just thought it like that. It was in 1927, John Marshall, who could realize the importance of it? Because when Alexander Cunningham had seen it in 1853 and then in 1875 also, he had got certain seals from Harappa. So he looked at it from every angle. He could not decipher what was written there on that seals. Because before that in 1840s, himself and Prince also, they had discovered Brahmi script. So they knew the Brahmi script, but this is unlike the Brahmi script. He looked at it from this angle, that angle. He could not realize the importance of it. But it was in 18, I mean, in 1927, for the first time, they came to know that similar seals have been discovered at many of the Mesopotamian sites, at Ur, Uruk, and many of the Mesopotamian sites also. And that goes back to 2400 BC. The similar, similar kind of seals. So till that moment, we were under the impression that the real history of India goes back only up to 600 BC. 600 BC only, only that. Before that, we had a history. But what was that history? Which culture, which civilization, whether it is Vedic or something else, nobody knew. And we knew that it was only up to 600 BC. And now when they got similar seals from here also, and exactly the same kind of seals from or also from Persepolis also, and from many of the, the, the sites associated with Mesopotamian civilization, where it has been dated and they came to know for the first time, it goes to 2400 BC. All of a sudden, the Indian history could be pushed back to 2400 BC. So in archaeology, it takes time. It takes time. You just cannot I mean, blame a person. Oh, Alexander Cunningham, he came to know, but I mean, they did not divert this thing. No, it takes time. It was actually Primser, James Primser and this person, that is Alexander Cunningham. It were they who had deciphered our Brahmi script also. If Brahmi script was not discovered by those eminent people, we would not have a greater part of Indian history would have been in dark age even now. So that credit also goes to them. Of course, I admit there might have been some people with missionary activities. But none of these people were that kind of missionary activities. None of them had that kind of religious thing. They were all, I mean, very genuine, sincere historians. It is possible that there could be some. But even at the same time, we should not paint all those people as I mean, British agents or American agents or missionary agents. Because there is a, now a trend going on. The, the, so I, I strongly condemn that kind of attitude. The question, actually, a uh, good point you mentioned over there because the lot of Anning, Alex Cunningham's quotes are there, quotes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, where he is working for the Protestant church and he wants to establish the greatness of the British Empire. See, the, yes. the, the, the point which I see, I travel very widely and I'm going to Peru in two weeks again. Uh -huh. And again, I'm going to, after that, I'm going to Brazil and other places, Chile. And the story is common across the entire world. Whether, whether it's India or USA or even USA was colonized. Hawaii was colonized in the 20th century. Yeah. 20th century. <laughs> you know, we, we all know how what happened to Native Americans. Yeah. One thing I must give a credit to you and all the people who have worked so far in the past is that all of you have preserved Indian heritage to some extent, whatever you could do. 
Yes. And and that is a credit to you and all all of you, be Professor B. B. Lal and everyone else, because the, you all have worked hard to preserve in an environment when Hindus were not so much awakened. Right now, yes. hyper awakening yes. is happening. It's hyper hyper awakening. Yeah, yeah. That and also should be balanced. That also should be balanced. <laughs> it's going to balance after they attain their objectives because the thing is, yeah. when a when a society is oppressed to yeah. such a large extent, they could not express themselves. It's yes. like a spring effect. Really, really, really. When I a spring agree. is compressed and suddenly yeah. released, uh -huh. it's going to go beyond its actual elasticity. Uh, elasticity, yes. And yes. then come down. Yes, it's going yes, to happen. Yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so everyone is facing the heat, but I say just wait for the spring to come back to its normal position. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, yeah. So the the uh, and and you know you and I are just observers. We don't create history. We are just reporting yeah. it and See, documenting it. So yeah. one one thing really comes to the mind with Alex Cunningham that yes, he did have Protestant background and he was there to to spread the glories of God because. That was a basis of colonization because yeah. the Church of England said, what you are doing in other parts of the world, you're civilizing them. Unfortunately, they tried to civilize wrong set of people, the Indians. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had a far more Vedic culture, which is more nuanced yeah. and more details to it. And you yourself yeah. know so many mantras, yeah. you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Far deeper, and uh, yeah. you, know, you you can quote many mantras. Many Indians can't. Yes, many yes. Hindus cannot quote also. Yes, yes, you know what you're talking. So one question comes to the mind is that the ASI, like if you look at the ASI's role now, and I'll come to your book, and that's why I'm making a segue there. So ASI's role should be to move as fast as possible as per people's perception, changing dynamics. Yeah, yeah. When Alex Cunningham or Britishers ruling the ASI, it was a different role. Yeah. Even when Jawaharlal Nehru was government was yes. behind ASI or Maulana yeah. Abul Kalam Azad, yeah. 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 ASI yeah. had a different yeah. mindset. Yes. And yes. now when it comes to uh, Narendra Modi ji's government, yeah. ASI should have a different goal role altogether. Yes. 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 So, uh, tell me in your book you have mentioned you have, did have mentioned about. Various incidents you have mentioned, plus mm -hmm. you have also. Uh, I'm going to come to your schools and other things. What you did also, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How the did the ASI change with the people's perception, or or did the ASI government's funding of ASI? You can touch upon all those topics right now, and then I'm come going to come specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, uh, as you said, you know, when the BJP came into power under Modi ji. Uh, all of us had a lot of expectations, you know, because you know, because you know, for the first time, uh, 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 no, for the second time, because you know, it was earlier the BJP came into power during uh, Vajpayee's period, but that was not with an absolute majority. But this time it came with a thumbing majority. So we all expected a lot of changes, and that took positive changes in archaeological survey of India. But that was a, I mean, this one, I mean, uh, this one, I mean, a terrible dissolution for those people who knew archaeology. Because, you know, that during the last eight years, things have gone down like anything. Like anything, because, you know, it was, I call it as a dark age of archaeological survey of India. I, in my book also, I have uh, used the word. It is, was the real dark age of archaeological survey of India. Earlier, what happened is, Every superintendent, your superintending archaeologist, he is the most important person in archaeological survey of India is concerned as far as the execution of work in various states. On the top will be the director general of archaeological survey of India. That is a different thing. And then joint directors would be there, additional directors would be there, and then directors would be there. This man would be, I mean, at a middle level. But it is he who calls the shots. I mean, this monument should be, I mean, conserved. This monument should be conserved. This site should be excavated. It is this person. But what happened during this BJP period was, earlier while we were there, I, this one retired from the Archaeological Survey of India in 2012. Earlier while we were there, we had a financial power of 25 lakhs of rupees. 
with the help of this 25 lakhs of rupees at various i am talking about different monuments we could conserve and preserve various monuments and we could explore and excavate also and could make a meaningful contribution every year but for the first time this power was completely reduced it was i mean it was reduced to only 3 lakhs of rupees now just think of it suppose you wanted to conserve a part of lal kila can you do anything any kind of meaningful with this one conservation by using this 3 uh, lakhs of rupees in a place like lal kila or you take some other forts and fortifications of some other madhya pradesh or uh, this one in delhi itself you have got adilabad is there you have tulakabad is there many of the forts and fortifications many of the temples like the great bhadishira temple what can you do with this 3 lakhs of rupees it was the whole archaeological survey of india came to a grinding halt it was almost like a this one I, i i somewhere else i had used the word it was like a painted boat on a painted wall i made a complaint against it i to um, some of the most important very very important most important sung persons then after the judgment of this uh, this one i mean that is uh, uh, ayodhya they had invited me for a lecture to nagpur there also i made i mean i mean openly i made this complaint against bjp rss in their treatment of archaeological survey of india then they told me requested me to give it in writing i gave it in writing also it took a number of months then even after the, all those things you need to a number of months for the implementation of it and now very happily very happily after very long after of 7 years of this one i mean uh, 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 this one now that power has been again returned and similarly many of these works of archaeological survey of india it has got two types of work one is the uh, uh, this one structural conservation structural conservation mean i mean if the monument is uh, bradishwara temple or if it is uh, kadiraho temple that is i mean if you are taking up any kind of work there on those monument that is known as structural conservation and then the area development area development is in pathways boundary wall toilets and other thing these were given to some other external officers external organization at a very high at a high at a very inflated rate i made a complaints against that one also because you know you have a system in archaeological survey of india itself which carries out all these kinds of work at a minimal rate minimal rate i mean the cost to cost but if you are giving it to i mean nandi lakh for a toilet that mean there is something fishy and it was given all over the country not only i mean in one two three monuments all over the country it was given i made a complaint against that also i mean the quality of the work was very bad even after i mean this is having inflated estimates and other thing the quality of this was very bad we made a complaint against that also but now very happily i mean that has also been stopped but it has taken the toll it has taken the toll because you know archaeological survey of india as i said it was almost like a painted boat on a painted wall for the last 7 8 years and in my own side just take the case of bateshwar in chambal valley where during the congress period i had conserved 80 temples 80 temples and they were not simply repair work it was completely gone and from this one i mean from the earth you know we had pieced together and 80 temples were reconstructed and during the bjp period not a single temple has been reconstructed record it not a single temple has been reconstructed during the 8 years of uh, this one i mean uh, during the bjp period many donors came and they donated the funds also but even after that also it has not been done so that is i mean because you know it was in a very i mean we we never knew that i mean this kind of dark age would be there in archaeological survey you know when you when you look at the uh, you know this is a very striking information for many of us because i think it you are revealing in your book as well and on this show as well and you know we 
somehow we see if you look at the Aga Khan Foundation Trust and they are able to light up all the monuments in Delhi and other places and with just 40 million dollars uh, endowment from there which was matched by the Indian government which is made up 80 million dollars. Now in case of Hindu or archaeological, real archaeological uh, wealth of India, what you're saying is in last eight years and 300,000 rupees, 3 lakh rupees is nothing actually. Nothing in India is... No, like, that is for one monument, 3 lakh means you know, for, for one monument, you know, for preparing one estimate, one estimate. So, so, and 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 you are saying that even the private participation also did not, even though it was there, still it did not happen. They they, they gave the funds, but mm -hmm. you know the, our system should be to take the money and implement it. For example, in Batishwa, I went along with Mrs. Sudha Narayan Murthy one day of Infosys. One day, madam, I mean, spoke to me over phone and said that I would, she would like, madam would like to go to Batesha and see the site. And madam was highly impressed by seeing the whole site because, you know, madam is not simply a donor or not simply a business person. Madam is an equally a scholar also and a scholar of art, iconography and mythology also. So, Madam was highly impressed by that one. And then after the discussions and after this one, I mean, Madam asked me, I was not in service at that time. It was in 2019. Uh, what do you expect from our side? So, I said that there was one Vishnu temple because it was mostly Shiva temples mostly, but there were few Vishnu temples also because that is in a very poor condition. If you can donate for that one, for the, I mean, uh, an amount for the conservation of that monument, that would be a very meaningful contribution. And then as an estimate was prepared and uh, the first uh, installment of the four crores of rupees, that was donated also. Even after that also, it took seven months for the work to be started. It has very recently started. And for that also, I had to do a lot of work. I had to plead. I had to go to Archaeological Survey of India uh, office twice just to plead them. I mean, please do because somebody has to contributed money, donated money for this one. If you are just keeping it like that, you know. And there are several ways of, you know, just, I mean, uh, we, we were refusing to pass the estimate. And I had personally gone twice. Not, I mean, I mean uh, this one uh, without their knowledge, donors' knowledge, I had gone there and pleaded with them and at last very recently it has been now with a lot of efforts you know it has now been i mean the work is is being taken up and i am also going there reaching there on 30th of this month and similarly but at the same time the madhya pradesh government is doing a lot the madhya pradesh government is taking a lot of interest because they wanted to develop the whole that Bhateshir, Padavali, Mitavali, the whole group of temples, they are doing a lot of things. But they also feel that Archaeological Survey of India is not doing the work, you know, the way they should have done. That is the problem. You have to have a dynamic minister behind all of these things. If you don't have the dynamic ministers, like I often quote the case of Jagmohanji. When Jagmohanji was, you know, I mean, things were moving like anything. That was during BJP, BJP first period, that is Adal Bihari Vajpayee's period. You, you have to have similar ministers, then only things would be easy for Archaeological Survey of India. They should have a vision, they should have the dynamism also. I mean, these if these not thing, if these things are not combined, you know, I mean, Archaeological Survey of India would be at least, I mean, I mean, running the way it is now, uh, uh, this one is going on. You know, it's very ironical that when when the country is behind in Narendra Modi, as uh, Prime Minister, is the most loved Prime Minister of India, even in India as well as US as well. Yes. Recently, the Mexican president proposed his name, hmm. his name, Pope's name, yes. and the UN chief's yes. name to be the three people who can ensure five years of peace in the world. Uh, that's the stature yes. of Prime Minister Modi. Yes. yes and yes. But if you look at the ministers that he has appointed, and I have personal experience as well, Prahlad Patel, uh, 
Yes, and you know, yes, you know my entire yes, story. Yes, yes, we have yes, spoken yes. many times on that. Yes, yes, and yes. and where we approached him for one of the temples in India, we know yes, how it happened and how yes, it turned yes, out. Yes, 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 and yes, also, yes. if you look at uh, even before that, Mahesh Sharma uh, mm-hmm. uh, was also a minister of uh, independent charge. Yes, the, yes. The the thing is, the archaeological work has been always left like a secondary work. of the ministry exactly. of culture exactly. yeah which is which is strikingly different than us or the western yes. we we try to you know copy the western model or bring that efficiency in mm-hmm. but these countries pay additional or extra money in yeah. just trying to prove their history from israel for example yes, yes, yes. Yeah, every yeah. single western country sends a delegation every year from their archaeological societies Same. funded by the state yeah. to israel To, to dig out their jewish yes. origins or a christian yes. origins yes 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 but the indian government doesn't give importance to that science i i mm-hmm. i personally feel that some mm-hmm. i went to some temples in south india now we are taking up a project for putting a roof on one deity who is standing in the sun under a tin shed oh i see uh, varad raj temple in trichy acha uh, yeah he is in a tin I shed see, see, see. and the I deity see, belongs uh, to chalukya oof <laughs> so and and uh, and somehow we we always feel and and I want people if you are watching this show that please join us satology because one of the missions is what we have that we want to go to these ancient places now the deity we all have beautiful homes but the deity is standing in a tin shed yes literally a tin shed most and unfortunate unfortunate very unfortunate and that too in tamil nadu which which has preserved many temples actually yes, yes state yes. Department, have, government they, of, have. they have done a good work and they can do little more but yes, yes, yes. but so far they have done a good work actually but also but at the same time the new governments state governments also in the state the new governments in tamil nadu have not done enough because the new government of uh, which is currently the running government which they have right now they have purposely removed funding from all this work now anything related to hindu they've done that <laughs> now but here asi steps in because it's archaeological society of india is where they can actually not only preserve the temple like it what happens in the west is open the church and then restore it back so that the prayers can start over there Yeah, yeah, but the ASI rules have been that if they renovate something, the uh, some places worships have started, but yeah. that is not their goal. Their goal is just to preserve yes. or document the antiquity and just leave it there. And yes. I think that's what it disconnects from people because when they want to see the place renovated and they can do the work. I for the viewers, I can also tell you in the past shows, uh, Doctor um, Kiki Muhammad has also shown. how he has built up beautiful gardens wherever he opened up public yeah, yeah, places yeah. where people can come in and take rest and those people places are very popular as it on the tourist map of india yeah. so coming to the next question so even if you look at the manmohan singh government manmohan singh government also kumari selja was there and then manmohan singh himself was responsible for ministry of culture yeah, and yeah, ambika yeah. soni and as jaypal reddy yes, 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 so yes. what was their contribution to the asi for all this work see they had given a free hand to archaeological survey of india i mean because you know, i was there in delhi during uh, ambika soni period then kumari selja period also and before that the prime minister himself was that manmohan singh ji was the I main minister they had all given they did not interfere in the work of asi but uh, bjp government you know they would interfere also without knowing the subject and they would take a wrong decision and that takes the department to a wrong course because as i told you because you know since the last 7 8 years nothing was happening in archaeological survey of india that was because of this attitude there you know i mean the, because you know at uh, at one stage ambika soni ji called me for a meeting and uh, there was a complaint against my attitude at amar kandak at amar kandak you know there were some very powerful uh, hindu religious leaders were there their construction was within the prohibited and regulated area so i had served them a notice also so then ambika soni ji called me and for a meeting and i showed madam three photographs 
what was the condition of this monument before being taken up by archaeological survey of india that was number one it was in a terrible condition it was in a highly ruinous condition and then what happened after taking over and now what is the condition of the monument because it was it was completed with lush green land so it is a very beautiful temple group of group of temples and after looking at this photograph madam said that this is wonderful transformation unbelievable transformation that was my comment of this one but on the other side it was a very powerful i mean religious leaders group of people then madam called called them aside and told told me i mean that you had to be very diplomatic in your dealing i said we are very diplomatic and they also know i mean the opposite party also know that we are doing a wonderful work then they when madam called them and told them that you know, this is a wonderful work is going on let it happen don't interfere in all those things if you have any problem you can speak to me that was the way i mean because you know we could disagree with the ministers similarly with uh, kumari selja also i could uh, when madam wanted that somebody should be favored with i said it cannot be done as per the rules because you know we have to follow certain rules and regulation and madam was very visibly because you know the case was recommended by another minister a cabinet minister and then madam was very visibly very visibly upset but later on madam realized also you know that was i mean my opinion was the right opinion and after my retirement you know immediately madam appointed me as consultant in uh, in the ministry of uh, culture so that is the greatness of the people you could disagree with those people and on rightful things but that was not happening in during the bjp period and there are number of examples i don't want to cite the examples now so you could meet ambika soni and you could uh, you could express or show what you have done were you able to meet prahlad patel or any of the other bjp ministers uh, yes i met him but i was not a this one archaeological survey of india officer at that time i told him all these things also how i mean the money is being misused and how the work is not going on and what are the main reasons not only with these people and some of the very top people in rss also but nothing happened and if at all it happened it was very 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 slow so when you said ideological uh, you know involvement of uh, the new government officials so w- what was the ideological involvement like what are the things which you experienced and uh, and would you like to if you like to share that and ideologically i mean they all wanted that i mean the ancient india was the greatest ancient india and all those things you know that is a different thing but i am an archaeologist i am not going to contribute to whatever they say because i am an archaeologist so an archaeologist should stick to its own archaeology because you know they say that i mean we had pushpa vimana at that time of course no archaeologist is going to i mean uh, accept that one we knew surgery at that time no archaeology is going to uh, accept that one if they say no we had missile ballistic missiles at that time no archaeologist is going to so we have nothing to do with that one we have to do we are not ritualistic we just wanted to know that i mean this is the the proud pride uh, heritage of the country that should be conserved that should be preserved and that should be marketed also because an unless and until you market your own heritage you will not be attaching any kind of value it for example you go to nalanda the great nalanda university or the greatest university in the world after takshila and it was 700 years before the establishment of oxford university and birmingham university cambridge university such a great university we had but you know when a person goes to a monument or to a, a site like that of uh, uh, nalanda first of all there should be a in interpretation center should be there in that interpretation you have to show a film showing the greatness of nalanda what a great nalanda university it was who all came to this university see 16000 kilometers was traveled by huyangsan 
and by Yi Jing, another Chinese traveler. They all came to this university to study, to be teachers, uh, first to be a student and then to be the teachers. It was an international university. So you tell the history of all this thing and also tell them that it was the place where Lord Buddha ha himself had said, sat. So once you tell these thrilling stories, it is the place where Buddha had sat and also tell them that it is the place where Huyang Sang and Yi Jing and many of this one, 200 scholars were there at that time from foreign countries when Huyang Sang and Yi Jing were studying here. If you tell all these stories, because it had a library, Ratnaganja, Ratnodadi, Ratna Sagara, the great libraries, which was of course burned by Bhaktiyar Kilji. If you tell all these stories, and then after seeing this uh, small documentary, a guide should take you to various places. And then he would be able to put a tongue in each and every stone. It might be ordinary stone, it might be ordinary bricks, for a person who does not know the history. But once you see this film and then go along with, a, with this one, a guide, you know, he would be able to put a tongue in each and every stone and the whole site would come alive. And you would be, I mean, returning from that Nalanda University as a completely different person. Your Kundalini would be awakened. You have to have that kind of experience. It should be an experiential experience. So that is what we want. So for that, you have to market heritage. Market in a very attractive way, but the government has not been able to do it. It is not, the, I, I'm not going to blame the BJP government for that one. Earlier, other governments also have not done it. But now you have a reason that you should do it now. If you are, I mean, there are a number of historical sites like this one. Hastinapura, what is the condition of Hastinapura? And many of the sites in Mathura itself, you know, the Upanishadic land and also the land of you know, Krishna, what is the condition of many of these things? During, while I, during my posting at Mathura and various other places, you know, we tried our own level, but you, know, you have got limitation. But if the central government starts taking up interest in all these places, like Hastinapura, Ahichatra, these are all Mithila, the great Mithila. These are all Upanishadic lands where great saints and servants had discussed various things, issues, various things they had issued. If you make a small story about all this thing, documentary, show the documentary, and then let a guide take them, then the whole impression would be completely, totally different. It is that kind of archaeology. You have to show, tell the world, and then market it to the, the market the heritage to the world. That is what we have to do. That is what China is doing. That is what we are not doing. I totally concur with you that uh, Indian governments have done a very poor job because yes. for an American or a Western, I've been living in this country for a very long time. And uh, for an American, India means Rishikesh. Ask yes. American, Rishikesh, Vrindavan, yes. Mathura, yes. Yeah. Jagannath Puri. Yeah. Look at all the American videos, travel videos, yeah. Humpy. Yeah. And uh, I'm talking about the American-American travel videos yeah, 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 or yeah, the yeah. old markets of India. They're not impressed yeah. by D-Marts and Walmarts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, see yeah. it everywhere in the U.S. In fact, in the U.S. also, there is a movement of small stores now, small cities, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. the culture. Yeah. And even the Native American sites are the tourist sections in India. So the, the ancient history has always been a, you can say, curious mind, human curious mind. And yeah, India has yeah. done a very poor job. And you mentioned Hastinapur. This time I could mm -hmm. not go. I had a plan. But but there's so many places to be discovered in Hastinapur. So mm -hmm. many places in Indra to be discovered. Yes. In, yes. Fact, in fact, the Rayasena Hill, according to my book, is actually the place of, of Yudhishthir's Mm -hmm. uh, according to uh, what is written in Mahabharat, is the mm -hmm. actual place where Yudhishthir Radha Sabha was also there on that hill. Mm -hmm. But I see. but it can be explored, like you said, all yeah. these things, yes, we can use the basis of Mahabharat's references yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah, Ramayana's yeah. references and check it out. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Ramayana, uh, you know, the so see, when these people talk about ideological things, 
most of them have not even read valmiki ramayana most of them mm, yes yes most of them have not read mahabharat also yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. writers like me we take out the facts and there are many good writers nilo chok and other people are there who have actually used the these mahabharat references to say this exists today mm-hmm. but it is a work of organizations like your earst with your earlier organization asi yes, yes, yes. to give credence to what we are writing as an author yeah. because we are all non fiction writers Yes, 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 yes. So uh, one question really comes to the mind is, is that when you talk about the heritage and one section you mentioned the communist and you mentioned yeah other political ideologies also. So what <laughs> do you think their impact if you want to cover communists or other leftist mm-hmm. organizations and their impact versus so called right wing? I don't believe in right or left personally mm-hmm. because yeah, right yeah. or left are two extreme positions. and my position exactly, is exactly 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 yeah 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 you know we are i always say we are neither left nor right we are dharmic exactly and exactly dharma exactly. means yeah. logic and yeah. reasoning yeah. and common sense yeah. it has nothing to do yeah, with yeah. religion yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? so the so i taking a centrist position without yeah. going into extreme of either of the factions yes what do you say according to your position because i believe you are also very centrist very simple very simple you know, very simple you, know. you 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 your name is mohammed but your actions yeah, yes, are yes. more hindu than many hindu so you are yes, a central yes, position yes 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 please go ahead yeah. see i have a great respect for hinduism as a religion because you know because you know if modern man requires a religion if at all modern man requires a religion and hinduism is the best bet for that because you know when you worship shiva you worship vishnu or you don't worship any of them you go to temple don't go to temple you have nothing you you don't have to quarrel with anybody it is opposite to that of the semitic religion if in semitic religion the semitic religion means judaism christianity and islam they see truth only through one eye that is only their god their religion and their religion that is the right religion only they will go to paradise all others will go to jahannam that is a I mean a hell that is what they think but this hinduism is not like that one it hinduism has got the freedom so if at all the modern religion needs a modern man needs any religion because you know, i call it a, this one comma if at all he needs the religion hinduism is the best religion so i have got great respect for that one so as far as the communists are concerned you know because uh, the congress government the, the minus point of the congress government was congress government of course they had a i mean a centristic attitude but at the same time as far as the history and the archaeology was concerned they were always siding with the communists and that too not ordinary communists extreme communists like irfan habi bromila tapar and other people you know but now people from archaeological side also st- have started speaking like me and many other people also we have started speaking and now the power is almost balanced now and even ichr also indian council of historical research also they have also taken a very strong stand now so that is something very 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 very, very favorable now because you know marxists are not enjoying the kind of power which once they enjoyed it because you know they had a lot of financial power at that time they could demand I mean, dole out scholarship like anything and if you are getting a scholarship they will come and demand I mean, people are not going to be very independent if you give them scholarship and they will side you if you if they the other person give them scholarship they will side them also so that is the thing so now they have been of course brought into their own proper light and uh, they are not having an upper hand also so that is something very good and uh, things are now in a proper perspective also that way things are now going so i i was just going through your book right now and mm-hmm. uh, seeing some very interesting episodes over there now coming to one uh, and and we may make it a series also on this interview because i think there are a lot of things in your book which are cannot be asked in one session here now there is one space you have one place you have mentioned uh, if i look at your uh, book in this the business diversification model 
and uh, also you have mentioned you're given advice to the asi about how the lands how how what can be the future of asi in terms yeah. of a proactive like uh, yeah. yeah will it make sense that instead of moving instead of maintaining asi under the ministry of culture yeah. will it make sense to move it under the uh, under the ministry of tourism because ASI and tourism will go actually serve the purpose of ASI yes. more. Yeah. 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 Tourism yeah. has more uh, budget as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this is you know because you know they, they, uh, even now because you know the Minister of Culture and Minister of Tourism are one person. It should be always like that only. It should not merge with the tourism department because you know then Archaeological Survey of India will be losing its own. I mean uh, relevance, so it should not be merged. But at the same time, you know, it should be under one ministry. But at the same time, what they can do is one is Archaeological Survey of India, which will be concentrating on the uh, es exploration, excavations, and conservation. That's because now, these are the three important uh, business of Archaeological Survey of India. But at the same time, that so that is Archaeological Survey of India, and then there should be another wing. That is what I have proposed in my book, Indian Heritage Development Corporation. A Indian Heritage Development Corporation should be there, which should take, I mean, all the business activities of Archaeological Survey of India, and business diversification also should be there. So how to elaborate it is because you know because uh, we have got various monuments are there. Earlier it was five, uh, eight uh, eight anna at one period of time. Then it became two rupees at one period of time. Then it became the, and I'm talking about the end of the space. Then it became I mean, five rupees. Then it became thirty thirty five uh, rupees like this one. The entrance was go, the fees was going on like that one. There are certain monuments where we have to make differential payment. What is a differential payment? You go to Paris in the Eiffel Tower. So up to one level, this is this much is the fee. If you want to go to the second level, it should be the fee. And the, again, go to the third one, it should be the, the fee. Now the carrying capacity of Taj Mahal, for example, it is in a, on Sundays and Saturdays, it is more than 50,000 people, which means it is more than the carrying capacity of the monument. Now, how to reduce? Because, you know, almost all the people, they don't want to go to the main uh, mausoleum. There is no need of it. They can see it from other sides also. So there, there should be a differential payment should be there. People who are going only up to the inside the, the gardens and other things, the fee is this much. And if you want to go to other monument, I mean, the monument proper, that is, I mean, this mausoleum, then that would be a different payment. So that way you can reduce the, uh, the entry of the people into the main monument. That is one thing. And you can earn a lot of uh, this one uh, revenue also. That is one thing. And then a number of people are making films in monument and against the monument background also. So feature films are there. Now, the, I mean, they are taking only one lakh of rupees for that one. But many of these monuments, you know, I mean, uh, these people are making huge, I mean, very big budgeted feature feeling. So in such monuments, you know, I mean, for example, Kumayon Stone or Bradishwara Temple or many other uh, uh, temples, you have to increase the fee of this one. At least you have to make it three lakhs or five lakhs of rupees. Because, you know, so that, you know, the, the monument can earn and then they can also, I mean, at the same time, you know, use that money, flow back that money for the maintenance of the monument. Light and sound program. The light and sound program, the revenue is not coming to Archaeological Survey of India. It is being taken by the tourism department. And that should be run by the Archaeological Survey of India. Many people are using the brand of Archaeological Survey of India. Ajanda watches. Charminar, this one, cigarette. Why don't you fee charge a license fee from all these people? And there are similar, many ways are there by which you can increase the, uh, the revenue capacity of the monument. For example, while I was working in Delhi, at that time, I mean, I was getting 30 crores of rupees at that time for the revenue of all the Kutub Minar, Lal Kila and all the monuments. 
then i made a prospective i mean this one i mean uh, a program by which how could archaeological survey of india earn archaeological survey of india delhi circle only i'm talking about delhi circle how could it earn 100, um, 100 crores of rupees there was no difficulty for me because you know in certain things you know one thing is i mean at that time it was only 5 rupees that has to be made into 50 rupees because i said that we have to charge 50 rupees for a monument so similarly various other things also we had to increase it another thing is you know that archaeological survey of india is giving non antiquity license to various establishments who are selling i mean so I mean, this one i mean uh, 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 and things that are looking like antiquities to other countries they are exporting it so a non antiquity license has to be issued by the archaeological survey of india and you might be i mean uh, surprised to know that archaeological survey of india is not charging anything for this kind of licenses if there is any other even if you are wanted to have a driving license you have to make a fee but in this case I mean, it is not there why don't you if there is any organization which is issuing a license and they are making crores of rupees out of that one in this out of this non antiquity license and if there is any organization which is issuing license almost free might be some small few charges are there almost free to these people who are making huge profits completely almost free that is the only organization is archaeological survey of india why don't you charge per item if you want to export this item and we are issuing a non uh, antiquity license for it and we are charging this much they would be um, earning in crores but archaeological survey of india is not doing anything so these are the thing you know if you have got a indian heritage development corporation all these ways and various other ways also can be explored and similarly from the uh, this one guides you can charge a very hefty because you know they are charging a lot similarly from photographers and all those things that should be again should be brought back for the conservation and preservation of the monuments that is what i proposed in this one a very positive very forward thinking actually because what you have given suggestions to the indian government is how you can make asi self uh, Self-reliant department. Self-reliant Self department. You know, Atman Nirbhar ASI. Atman Atman Nirbhar. They will say Atman Nirbhar and everything, but they will not implement it. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, the thing is, like, uh, it is it is a Hindi saying or an English saying also. Also, yes. you know, generally in America, the, the mantra is, the duck which quacks the loudest gets the cracker. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, and, and the, the importance of ASI cannot be minimized in any way because in every country's heritage is built by these kind of institutions. Yes, like yes. if you look at Vietnam, Cambodia, even mm -hmm. though they have much lesser history yes, as compared yes. to India, but they are working extremely hard to, yes, yes. when we say decolonize this year's independence mm -hmm. speech of Prime Minister Modi, and ASA is a major tool in their hand for decolonizing. Yes, major tool in their hand. Major tool. But they don't know how to handle it. They <laughs> don't know how to handle it. Yes, yes. You know, miserably they, failed to handle it. Yeah, because no I... No thought, no thought is going on. Whether it is RSS, whether it is BJP. I blame them squarely for that. <laughs> because I had at least spoken to some of the RSS people. You know. They all listen to me, but they don't, uh, I mean, they don't act upon it. Well, RSS is not in the government, so they are not, they don't matter. Not in the government, but they could have influenced. I could speak to them because of, I mean, I would issue and other things. So I thought at least they would listen, but they don't. They don't think at all. What I have been told by many RSS leaders is, directly has been told, that they have no say in BJP. They cannot influence because BJP doesn't listen to any one of them. Pretty clearly, I have been told. And uh, on the ground, I've been told. So on the ground, what is the situation? I don't know. But but this is why I've been told very clearly. And uh, so, but anyway, this is a political issues. Now, the importance of, for example, my last question, and I'm going to make a second series because you have written too much in your book or other aspects also, which I have not been able to cover. The, uh, one last question on this one. See, the, the, when you look at the ASI type of organizations in other countries, 
they are run by private boards yes they are not run by government boards mm-hmm. so the advisory council is always a private citizens body mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 but if you look at the even today the in the textbooks case you can see indian textbooks mm-hmm. which have been grossly incorrect in many ways and independent authors are coming out and debunking it mm-hmm. writers are coming out debunking on youtube on one yes, of my, yes. my our channel also focuses on that but the so the citizens view is very different than the government's view now you yeah. are a private citizen now yeah. your view is very different than the government's view because you are now you have experience and you can see it yes so, but in india that is not the case can it ever happen because if there are a private citizens body maybe the prominent published authors prominent uh, uh, historians who are actually focused on when the nation has an identity of its own which is growing up in india now mm-hmm. then they will make good decisions for everybody because the land belongs to everyone who lives on it yes yes yes, yes you know so do you think that that is a right way of increasing the asi's value in public's eye right now the that ASI is what is... they have done in english <laughs> england yeah. english heritage society is there exactly exactly yeah english heritage society is a private body private body they are running now yeah, they are running most of the monument very efficiently that's right so that's similar right. kind of you know because you know the government is not showing that kind of interest if uh, uh, th- this one i mean these bodies can come they can work they can a uh, create a kind of system you know in which could be professionally administered you have to have certain ad- way the professional administrators for all this organization there should be accountability for all this thing i'll give you one one more example which has not been uh, very much uh, known to the people while i was working in delhi that was mainly for that uh, this one during the commonwealth period my i mean i got only 20 crores of uh, rupees for the for the commonwealth for two years that means for each year there was 10 crores of rupees and i had 47 monuments to conserve but what i did is along with that conservation there was in in uh, this one I mean, there were many uh, uh, forts and fortifications were there in delhi so one is that uh, uh, panchshil mark panchshil war was uh, mark was I mean, that uh, uh, the second delhi area and then there was another uh, this one area i mean uh, 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 ajaib uh, saidul ajaib that was another area and then the third area was there i mean that was near chandni chowk area in all these places you know when i took up the conservation because of most of the this one city fortification wall that had gone completely below the earth that was not visible and the land was engrossed by various people but when i got an opportunity i not only excavated that uh, all those uh, uh, with this one i mean uh, uh, sangan walls also that is city walls of ancient delhi and uh, recreated them many of the at many places i had to reconstruct them and then also acquire the land all around it that land was no man's land but when i uh, uh, took over this one that land was also almost I mean, taken over and then the whole area was completely fenced also and now there are beautiful gardens all around it. so similarly 40 acres of land one acre is near chandni chowk that is just where i mean the prime minister is i mean this one uh, hoisting the flag there was one one acres of land that was the municipal mcd land but when most of the ticket uh, this one uh, sellers were using that area i removed them and removed them and uh, took over that land and one side took over the land you know the mcd came they said that no it is their property and they wanted to remove my fencing and other things and then we said that no it is a government to government thing and we took over the land and similarly 40 acres of land has been recovered by archaeological survey of india during that period and similar operations could be done at various places and in kajraho while i was there you know 100 acres of land but for that i mean i had the support of jig mohan ji at that time so that is what i said you have to have visionary ministers visionary officers and dynamic ministers which is lacking in the all bjp government 
so far no actually uh, the 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 babus i will say is officers now england is the most bureaucratic country spain is a highly bureaucratic country france germany very bureaucratic very very bureaucratic like over there you have to break your head against the wall to get things done literally now if you look at america it's a colony america is not a country it's a colony oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. and canada is a colony australia is a colony now one thing good these colonies have done even though they have come from the same stock and they are suffering from europeanism i can say very clearly they're suffering from europeanism they have done a remarkable job in promoting whatever little history they have 300 years or 200 years yeah, or 400 yeah, years yeah, 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 that's yeah. history they have their remarkable job and they have literally worked against the natives of all these lands australian government has consistently now they are changing because yeah. many of the australian members of parliament are from native aboriginal tribes aborigines connect to india yeah not yeah, other yeah. countries india mm-hmm. on australia they connect to india native americans they also connect to india if you look at the conferences organized they done done that but india being a native country is still run by the native people because hindus mm-hmm. and uh, who sir mm-hmm. is born there is a native of india mm-hmm. they are running the government and they don't have any connections but still the problem with the native countries have been they've been they've also been suffering from europeanism because mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. their viewpoint is coming from europe not from india mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. if i if i uh, point your question uh, your personality what is come out from your autobiography is that you are thinking as a native of india mm-hmm. how yes. to expand yeah. the glory of india yes. yeah, and yeah. cannot be done by babus cannot be done by yes. ministers you know organizations like ministry of culture ministry of or asi they have to be driven by the private citizens period, period. cannot be driven by the babus because babus yes, have to yes. is again a colonial legacy it's a second layer because the uh, Ameri- british did not understand the indians languages vernacular languages and they created a layer which they can act as a translator for them but in india is a different thing like in america the the most of the officials are selected not elected mm-hmm. and uh, uh, sorry elected not selected so the, you have to fight an election to come on to the body so this is a very viable model and uh, and any closing words on this session very explosive session viewers must watch it from beginning to end and you will know about kk mohammed uh, dr kk mohammed more so anything add you want to add which you missed out and we'll make it, uh, another session on this one we'll go we'll go more into your third chapter yeah yeah, yeah. i like yeah, that yeah. sure 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 yeah. i think i mean most of the important uh, uh, issues we have already uh, covered and uh, which would make this session also very interesting and uh, not only interesting a kind of thought provoking because when you have to have that thought provoking session should be there it should be able to shake up the government which is not happening now they may say the gaurav shali itihas var ab sare bjp wale kehte but i have no faith in the all those people thank you thank you dr mohammed he is padma shri dr kk mohammed very respected archaeologist from india and the world actually so viewers do get this book the link is in the interview and and see what you can find out and do approach your officials if whether it's in usa or india a lot of american indian americans are involved in indian politics also so do approach them and see how we can change the face of asi which can be a big addition in atmanirbhar bharat yes thank you namaste namaskar thank you so much